I'm only one. And it's also can do this from the front and back. So people are seeing it or even the side too. and the conga drum and two and how I was dancing at the conga drum and one okay now you can explain to them what you were doing yeah. yes. right after that uh, the bongo actually is four and four and then right. step one right. so right after four and step on one then the accent that you hear on the what they call the tumbao the, the pattern that the conga is playing the accented beat is always on the two so you hear bongo this four slap of the yeah, right? blowing an accent that you hear the slap that's on the second beat. So you have to lead into that, which is four and one, then comes the slap two, three, go go one, two, three, go go one, two, three, go go one, two, three, go go, go go, go go, So what we do when we call this breaking on two is we break forward on that slap on the two. For the men, that would be your left foot breaking forward on the two. And when you're going back, the right foot's going to lead back on the second measure. And again, when the slap hits, that would be breaking on the two. So you have four and one, two, three, four and one, two, three, boom, boom. Four and one, two, three, four and one, two. To the side, four and one, back to three, four and one, three. Boom, 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 boom. And that's what you call breaking on the two. Right? Even Eddie Torres backing me up. The slap is the two guys, okay? The slap of the conga drum is the two. And so, if you have problem following numbers, you know, like and one, two, three, and five, six, seven, then just listen to what he just told you that the slap is it too, and if you accentuate on the slap when you go forward or when you break out back or forward, then you'll be on the two. And if you want to dance on the one, then you do what I was doing, which is right after the four and I go on the one. And, and then after that, he goes on the slap for the two, okay? But, you know, stop all this thing on the internet about that not being true because now, you know, you can't get any more authority than Eric Torres telling you guys that that's the way you dance and the salsa tumbao. Remember, this is the actual salsa tumbao and the conga drum. And that's it. If you're on there, you're on time and you're doing everything right. There's no way. And I had to bring a witness all the way from New York with the authority of Eric Torres to try and stop people from confusing other people because when you go on the internet and you tell people that I'm not right in doing that, you're confusing them, when in reality I'm telling them the actual truth, correct? Let me just add to that, Ron. Yeah. I, I'd like to say that back in the 60s, I'm talking about the late 60s, I started teaching this dance when I was 16 years old. At that time, no one, and I mean no one, in the nightclubs anywhere knew anything about timing. We never discussed whether you danced on the one or the two. That knowledge was nowhere to be found. One thing I did know and realized that when I started listening to the music and I would dance, I knew that I found myself gravitated and breaking on those slaps, like you say that now we know it's the two. I found myself using that as my guide, where to break front and back. So it was, I used to bring a, a guy that knew how to play congas to the class. I knew nothing about counting, but I used to tell the students, listen to this pattern that he's playing called the tumbao, and that beat that you hear him slap on, which is the strongest beat, that's the beat that I want you to step forward with your left foot, and then when you go back, I want you to do the same thing with your right foot. So I used to have the guy start playing conga. 
good. And I used to go forward and go back, back, go, go, forward, and go, go. This was the first introduction that I started back in the 60s. But to, but to discover years later, I studied music and everything to find out that that was what? They do, right? You want to? Yeah. See? That's yeah. what I found out. I started asking questions and reading books, and I found out that that accent was always the second beat in the four beat measure. Okay. So okay. That's, that's what's right. known as dancing. So I listened, yeah. again, free from Eric Torres, and you got his phone number, you got his site here, and everything else that we'll put right when we give you this videotape free. And you can talk to him more about it on his site or and the fall. Okay, so here he's going to go for it. As I was explaining just now to Ron, that I find in teaching people who are now, let's suppose you're already knowledgeable on dancing on one, and you'd like to start learning how to dance on two. So what I found for me that really works, and it really is something that the students also attest that it's the best way and the best approach, is not to teach so much the footwork or the time step by teaching the foot pattern, but to teach the actual body rhythmical structure, which is different from the one. As I, as I was saying before, when you dancing on the one, the rhythmical feeling in your body, we call it quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow, where you go quick, quick, slow. Quick, quick, slow. But the rhythmical structure for the two is what we call in the dance world quick, quick, quick. Quick, quick, quick. And the way to develop that is, for example, for the gentleman, you bend your right knee, and you take your upper body and you lean over to your right side. So your upper body is leaned over to the right, the knee is bent, on the, on the, the right knee is bent, so you lean over. Now, the action will all begin here. You're going to rock your knees forward and back in three counts, and we're going to slow down on the fourth count like this. So by rocking the knees, you're going to go and one, two, three, and hold four, and then continue and go five, six, seven and hold eight. Now, here's the key to this. When you bend your right knee, your hip contracts, your left hip contracts, as you see this way, to your left side. Now, as you bend your left knee, your hips move to your right side, and then your upper body moves over to your left. So you have the rib cage here on the left and the hip on the right. And this is why it's called contrary body motion. The hips go in one direction, and the upper body goes in the opposite. So now again, you bend your right knee, your hip goes to the left side, but your rib cage goes over to your right side. So when you do this in three counts and you hold four, you develop what's known as contrary body motion, like this. And one, two, three, hold four, five, six, seven. Really develop yeah, it. But yeah. remember, this is actually, if you think about this, this falls into a very natural, uh, a natural pattern. Just like walking, when we walk, our gait, what we call the gait, should be left arm right. forward with right foot. Right. Left foot forward with right arm, so you walk like this. No one really thinks about this, but this is a very natural, beautiful coordination when you're walking. We don't walk like this, we don't put our right arm forward with our right foot. Except when you're marching. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, the same thing with this. If the action here, this is the action causes the, ribs, the, no. the hips to go side to side, then you're doing something that's very natural, like walking in place. Right. Like doing merengue, see? Yeah. Keep the feet flat. Flat. Merengue. Go, go, go. So Ron, what, what you're doing here is what I do now to introduce students into learning how to dance on two. Right. And I find that once they understand the rhythmical structure of how body works rhythmically on the two, then the feet start to fall in a lot more naturally. So instead of teaching them like this, one, two, three, five, I teach them this, one, two, three, and then I say, okay, now we're going to put our footwork into it. So the body continues with the rhythm of one, two, three, and five, six, seven. This has been sort of a revolution for me in New York on getting students to really learn the difference, for example, of what, what yeah, but not, not just in New York, worldwide. Remember? Well, actually, you know what? Now, now that you're saying this, and I, and I said this years ago, because I always seem to seem to know where the dance is going. Just like today's trend with the youth, there's a lot of uh, a lot of quick turns, a lot of speed work. But one thing that I knew that years ago, when I when I saw the popularity of the one, I said eventually 
the people that learn one are going to want to learn how to dance one too. I knew that. I said it years ago. And of course today, in Japan, all in LA, in Germany, all over the world, people who are now have, have learned the one are asking, the students are asking teachers, please teach me the two. The two is a beautiful thing also because it has a very free, a very liberating feeling rhythmically in your body. So you let yourself really experience all the polyrhythms. Just like the music is polyrhythmic, the body on two tends to free you up so you have a symphony of different movements in your body, but all in coordination and in sync with the timing of the music. Right. So that's why Tito Puente used to always tell people, dancing on two is a beautiful thing too, so don't close your minds. People are constantly asking me to compare the one with the two, and I say they're both beautiful timings. But I tell, I'll tell, I tell people, if you, learn, if you know the two, then learn the one. Because it's a beautiful thing to have knowledge. It's like speaking different languages. The more timings you know, the more people you'll be able to dance with. Right? But the people that know one, I encourage them, learn the two, because I know that they're going to like dance on two. And if people know it, you should also learn the one, so, so they have more repertory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I, but I know for sure that, that uh, the, the two is, is, a, is a dynamic experience rhythmically. I know that, because once, once you get into knowing how to let the body work freely in those polyrhythms, you're going to realize, wow, you feel like there's a certain freedom. So when you're moving, bah, the whole body is like a symphony of movement, and there's a constant movement, a constant flow rhythm. But again, I am not an advocate to say, oh, the one is better than the two, the two is better than one. I tell people, relax. Learn how to dance one properly, or learn how to dance two properly, and enjoy yourselves. Yeah. That's the key. Or both, so I can have everything. Okay? Hey, but play me the three, two, grab, and do your basic step. I want to see how your it falls into your basic to see if you can actually do the coordinations. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, three two clappers. By the way, Ron, when, when I'm when I'm talking in bars, for me now since since a basic step takes two measures. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I go from one through eight. Right. Musicians of course one through four, one and four. But for dancing purposes it's yeah, takes no, I, two, I two measures, right? I, yeah, I, I already adopted that, you know. So so like now for, for example the three two clapper which we already we already established that it goes one between two and three on four, and then if you go to the next measure, counting to eight, it would be not five, but it would be six, seven. Right. So you would you can count it like one, and four, six, seven, one, and four, six, seven, and those five beats are placed within eight counts, right? Right. right? Yeah, yeah. So so people say. I dance on clave. I said, no, you dance in clave. Here's the clave, and you dance your basic step within that. Yeah. But then, a lot of people used to think that dancing on clave or in clave meant that you had to step on the clave beats. You would do that as a shine. You just want to go pa, 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 pa. You could say that's a shine. But that is not your time step. Your time step is one, two, three, four, yeah. five, yeah. Six, right. seven, eight. Now, right. playing the three, two clave yeah. within your basic would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right. One, two, three, four, five. And that's what I wanted to make sure that you right. Right. are in sync with the way that right. I teach people what it means to dance in club doing the times. Right. One more time. One, two, one, three, three, four. Ah, one. Right. Right. Okay? right. So that, that once you get that down, right. that's the first half. Right. Now on the second on the second measure. We establish from one to eight right. that the last two beats of the clave come down on the count of six, seven. Six, seven, right. If you were counting it in fours, it would be two, three. Right, right, right. right. So we're going to count it in eight, so you know how I, right, how right, I right, teach right. it in the right, whole right, eight right. count. So right. after you went four, the left foot steps right. back on five. Four, right. Then after five. you step on five, the last two beats come in on six, six. seven. Right. Keep the seven four. Right, right. Seven. So you went from here. Here's four. Four, four, go back, five, five, six, six seven. seven. Then the right foot goes up on eight, and you start again, which right. is right. eight, one, two, and, and three, four, four five, five, six, six seven, seven, eight. Now, let me ask you, do you, understand, do you see why Tito would mess with the dancers? Right, yeah. Because even the dancers in my group, sometimes I would not even take time to try to get old because this is like a really sophisticated right, right, way right, right, of right. dancing. Mm -hmm. So he would walk into the room. I remember he says, he says, Maria, let me see you play 3-2 clave and do a basic time step. <laughs> Maria had no problem. 
Right. But I realize if you want to get into a really sophisticated lesson with a student, teach them. And if this is not enough, Ron, this is only dealing with the three, two gods. Right, 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 right. Now what happens when you reverse it? Reverse it, yeah. So as you can see, there's a lot to be said about studying the theory behind the work. Right. Yeah. Right? So, so yeah, and you were lucky that you had Tito point there. I, absolutely, because mm -hmm. you know what? Whenever there was a problem, I'd run to him. I said, Tito, I have a question for you. Ba -ba 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 -ba. He said, well, ba -ba -ba. he would explain three, two clave, two, three clave, rumba clave. Okay. He would give me all these, these little tidbits, right? right? But what I say also is that this is good. It's good to know this. It's like a person who really wants to become sophisticated in their knowledge. Yeah, it's yeah. good, Ron. Yeah. But you know what? It's hard. It, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's, it's even better than that. It's not necessary. Yeah. Listen to this. It's not necessary. In order to teach a student, like you see, all these students, all these guys in the clubs, they're flashing beautiful moves. If you walked up to every one of them and asked them to do this, I bet you nine out of ten or ten out of ten didn't, don't know how to do this. So that proves to you that you can learn how to dance only knowing how to keep tempo without knowing the three two clave, the two three clave, and how it's placed in the footwork of, of your basic step. You see? But it's a good thing to know. Right. Okay, for example, as a teacher, you know the students always coming up to you with all these questions. Excuse me, Eddie, can you explain to me why? Ba 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 ba. And as a teacher, and I'm the kind of teacher that, and Maria can tell you, if I don't know, I say, well, you know what? I don't know. Let me go ask somebody that does know, and I'll come back to you. Yeah, as, but opposed, to, as opposed to opening up my mouth and making stuff up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you know, it's like this. Um, check this out. So Tito would look at it, he go, mm, yeah, this is correct. Yeah. And if there was a problem, he would say, no, Eddie. I'll, I'll, I'll help you see the problem. Like one time, Maria, I was playing, you know, I had my own band for, for a while, right? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, oh, I have a CD, I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. <laughs> I, have a, I have a CD, seven I have a band. Seven years we had the band. For like seven years, I was doing my own thing with the band. But at some times, Maria, I would be rehearsing with the band, or I'd be playing with the band, and I'd be, uh, the band would be playing over there, and I'd be playing clavier. And then Tito will walk in, he'd, look, he'd come next to me, he goes, yo. He would correct me. I was playing 3-2 clave on an arrangement that they were playing that was 2-3 clave. Right. So I would be thinking, I'm hearing it one way, I'm saying, oh, that's a 3-2 clave. Ah, 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 ah. Tito would say, yo, yo, you're playing the wrong clave. I said, what do you mean? He says, you're playing 3-2 clave, and that arrangement was written on 2-3 clave. And he would correct me, I would go. Tito Puente will always... Whoa! And then I start asking questions. Music. So I would ask questions like, why do musicians use the two claves? Why is it all of a sudden you're dancing and you're hearing a two three clave and somewhere along the, 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 the tune it changes to a three two clave? And he would say, well Eddie, when you write music, it's like writing a composition in English literature. You have to write, you have to know where the commas go, you have to know where, uh, where all the correct grammar, uh, the, 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 the grammification, uh, it's place because when 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 uh, arrangers are writing music, sometimes within what they're saying, within their arrangement, it is appropriate in what they're saying to use the two three clave because their melodic phrases and everything fits in within the two three. But then they might come apart where they actually use something that the two three clave does not work, so they have to switch over oh. and use the two three. three. Yeah. And he explained, I, I, I said, well, why do that? If you start on 2-3, why don't you stay on 2-3? Stay three? on 2-3, yeah. And he said, no, because music is not that simple, my man. He said, when you're writing music, you're, it's like putting commas and, and putting acts and putting uh, uh, things Question in the right the place. Relations. So he says, when you're writing music, it's like writing a sentence. And for this part of what I'm saying, the 2-3 clave, it works for me. It's, it fits right in. But then this part, it gets a little tricky. So the 2-3 does not fit there. So they switch over and two, they three, use the 3-2. Yeah. And I said, wow, how many people know that? Because dancers all the time, they're saying, Eddie, how come the club is always changing on me? And so you know what I tell them? I said, you know what? Maria and I used to always have fun within, within, uh, within, the, uh, the, within the nightclubs. We'd be dancing to a tune, and she would hear the change, and so would I. So we had a little shuffle step that we would do to make the transition to the opposite clave, right? But... I tell students, that's fun, but if you hear, like there's a tune that Willie Rosario recorded called Fisico. 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 Yeah. In, that, in that tune, and you should buy it and pick it up so you can see, it's like every four bars they change the clave. So what are you going to do for five minutes, change every four bars when the clave is changing? I said, that gets to the point where it can drive you bananas. I used to tell, I used to tell uh, uh, dancers, I think, I 
think that climate change is because musicians like to mess with the dancers. <laughs> I said, I think they just like to trip us up, you know? Yeah. I says, but the truth is, I tell them, if the club is going to change that many times, don't keep changing back and forth. Stay. Stay, stay, stay yeah. because yeah. if you know it's going to go back and forth, then you're going to be in the middle of your dance. Yeah. You're going to have to stop and go. And uh, uh, what do you think of, of, of the concept of, of just staying with the conga drum then? So you don't have to mess with the okay. clave. As long as you're breaking on two, whether it's 3-2 clave or 2-3 right. clave. Yeah, you know, stay with the conga drum. Stay with the two. Do you know what? We know what, Ron. We, we've established, uh, because again, before, before I, I started bringing all this theory stuff into the studios, no one paid attention to that. All they know is go back, go go back, and they knew that once you heard that accent, whether you were forward back, it wasn't a matter of being on ladies' timing or men's timing. That didn't matter. Yeah. As long as you were on two. Yeah. So whether you were on what we call now ladies' timing or men's timing, yeah. that also did not exist. You know who told me a beautiful story? And check this out. Vora Canale. She told me she was dancing with this uh, with this teacher, ballroom teacher. Very educated, very well-known cat, and everybody was like, oh, they were in awe with this cat. So he asked her to dance. But, you know, Laura Canales is very jazzy. She, she likes to play with timing. Mm -hmm. So at some point, she was messing around with her steps and, and, and kind of like changing her, her clavis by herself. And the guy stopped her and gave her a whole lecture. Whew. He literally stopped her on the dance floor in the club and said, no, listen, by the way, you know. This. And then she, she looked at him and she says, Eddie, I didn't say this, but you know what I was thinking? In my mind, I was saying, relax, it's only a dance. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, right. Why get so tripped up and so frustrated over, right. and especially you know, to embarrass her like that on the mm -hmm. floor in front of everybody. Yeah. So she was saying, no, that's not cool. That was more incorrect than me being in and out of the different clavis, right. yeah. was his approach to her, mm -hmm. right? And she, what she said is true. Today, we put more emphasis, these, these teachers and the students are so caught up with the theory side now, that they're forgetting to do what, Maria? Have, Have fun. fun. Yeah. Flirt. Look at each other. And you know what? I, I get students I get students who say like this, right, Maria? <laughs> say, Eddie, before I knew anything about this dancing on two or one or timing or clave, I used to go to the nightclubs and have a ball. Now that I'm studying dance and I'm knowing what it is to dance on the two and on the beat, he goes, I'm miserable. <laughs> he says, because all I do now, instead of going into a club, I wow, shake my body and, and have fun. He says, I'm thinking. Everything I do now, is am I on the one? Oh my goodness, and I'm all worried about this. She goes, so what has this done for me? Instead of being something that has enhanced my, my ex experience on the floor, now I'm all messed up. I go to a club and I'm almost afraid to break because I'm not sure if I'm on the one. <laughs> That's it. I say, you know, I just tell relax. Say, you, know, I tell, you know what I tell Ron? All right. It's like when June Liberta told me, right, Maria, after 15 years dancing like a wild stallion in the clubs, to find out that I was always on two because it was a natural feeling for me. But when June Liberta said, you got to learn how to dance on timing. You got to learn music theory. You got to learn how to phrase and structure your work theoretically like a musician who plays music. I said, June, don't, don't bother me with that. I said, I can't be counting beats and numbers while I'm trying to dance. I said, how am I supposed to have fun? She says, you know what? She says, at first it's going to feel very, very challenging and very frustrating. But you know what? After you learn that and it becomes innate, yeah. it becomes second nature, you're going to dance with more sophistication, with more knowledge. You're going to be kookier. You're going to be able to play with your steps. And you're going to have a heightened experience. Because now you've got the art and the science working together. It's going to take you to another level. And when you choreograph and when you teach, she says, you're going to be a better teacher and a better dancer for it. But it's not going to come easy to you. Yeah. She says, you've been dancing natural for 15 this way, years. Uh, she says, it's not, going to change. Yeah. it's not going to change overnight. You're going to yeah. take time and you're going to suffer a little bit. And she was right on. Yeah. Now when I'm dancing, I mean, my, my timing is already innate. Yeah. But I do things now that I don't think I could have ever done and understood and even enjoy to a certain, uh, to, to, to another level now because I'm now when I'm putting all this cookie stuff together, I'm saying, wow, I understand exactly where I am in the music, in Clive. Yeah. So it's a different experience. But at first, it wasn't fun. I was like that person who said, man, I'm miserable now, man. I don't <laughs> know if I'm correctly on the one or the two of them. But that was, that was the price to pay. Yeah. And there's a guy who was one of the most fabulous dancers, natural street dancer named Roberto, Cuban guy. And Roberto told me, I asked him about four or five years after I started my company back in 1987, I said, Roberto, will you join my group? I said, because you are fabulous. You're a real talented Cuban natural. 
Zeddy, I would love, and I'm flattered that you asked me to join your group. I would love to join you. But he says, I'm not willing to pay the price that you paid. And I says, yeah, what price is that? He says, well, you see, you were the wild stallion that I grew up with, <laughs> that at one time you Why used to just be natural, and everything you did was just so spontaneous. He says, now I look at you, he says, and although you dance beautiful and you have clean execution, he says, but you're now structured. You're now educated. So now you're missing and you're lacking the spontaneity that you used to have. And I said, you know, you're right. Because before I knew anything about club or something, if I'd be dancing in the club, right, Maria? Yep. I wouldn't think if I was going to jump over that chair and slide on the floor on my knees and do a head roll. I wasn't going to think whether that was one or two. That was the music moving me. I wasn't worried about one or two. I can't do that no more. Because now I'm like, one, two, three. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, one, two. <laughs> so I was what, 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 about, what about these people that say that, that they, they don't dance to the beat of the music, that they are dancing to the music? Have you okay. heard that? Oh, I've heard many. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, you know what they mean by that? I understand what that means. Yeah. They've abandoned now the straight tempo of, of the count and they've gone into what they call the melodic structure. Right, right. So instead of going one, two, three, four, they might be jumping on the piano, which is going gay, 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 gay. So what they do is they put movements melodically, just like what the piano's playing, and they also call that phrasing. Right. Just like when you go 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 pa go go pa go 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 pa, and you put movements to that go 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 pa go go pa go 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 pa go go pa pa. That's what they mean. Now I'm on the melody. Yeah. I'm on the melody, so they've abandoned the one, two, three, and they become the melodic sentence. Like I do that now. I've done it for years. And matter of fact, that's now now that the dance stuff today are so turned on with that. So you see, everything now is with the melodies. What? Wow! 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 Choo! Ah! Ah! They're moving within. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's matter of fact. Um, June also taught me about that. Because I was also fascinated. I said, wow, June, did you see how he moved his hand with the break? She goes, Eddie, that's called phrasing. I said, phrasing? She goes, yeah. You're actually moving within the phrase, the melodic phrase of the music. And I said, wow. She taught me about that. So today, see, what, what was to me something like a, a real serious school in learning all these things about clave, Today, I was saying that the, the, the dancers and the students of today, the they have it made, Ron. Because they get free. What took us by trial and error, because mm -hmm. back in the days of the nightclub where there was no teachers, you used to go like this. If Ron was dancing on the floor and he did something you liked, you would sit there and drool. And you would hope that he would repeat it a few times so you could try to imitate it. Right, right. How was that? And if you walked up to Ron and said, Ron, can you explain that to me? He said, yeah. It goes, wah. Wow. Yeah, but what does that mean? It means, wah. Wow. That's the way I feel it. You see what I'm saying? It wasn't like he knew how to tell you, well, this is one, this is two, this is three. You see? So we had it hard, Ron. Yeah. Because we had to do this. Oh, 